Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. We have a great show lined up. We'll get started our weather. Always brought to us by Haney Technical Center right there on Baldwin Road. You don't, don't want to uh, miss an opportunity to go by and visit those folks. You might want to take some classes this summer. So run by and see Principal Mike Heffenstall and the able-bodied staff there. Uh, today, another beautiful day like it was yesterday. High today, 83. 83 degrees, low tonight, 68. And the water temperature, get this, it jumped up to 70 degrees. It, about a week ago, it was like at 64. It really just really shot up. So seeing all kind of action out there with a 70 degree temperature. Now look at our river readings, the Apalachicola Blunstown, it had really jumped up last night and it started falling a little bit and I, I know some of y'all are glad about that. We're looking at, we're looking at a situation where it's 9.2 and falling and so this weekend if you're going on a big river, it's, uh, it's falling. I just looked out there and that's the Choctahatchee River, okay? So if you're going on, the, not the big river, but the Choctahatchee River, <laughs> it's going to be 10.8, uh, 10.8. Ten point eight. Now let's go to the big river. Get everything straight. On the big river, we're looking at now it's level on the big river. Not going to be any kind of movement this weekend. It's going to be nine point two, and uh, well, both of them you know high. One's at nine, one's at ten. So, uh, but the Chautauqua will be dropping, and Apalachicola will be actually will be uh, just staying right where it is. Okay. Uh, take a look at our marine forecast. Now it's going to be coming at an east. We're going to have an east wind at ten to fifteen knots. It seems to be two to three. The marine forecast always important. Uh, I know a lot, a lot of folks now are going out kayaks and smaller boats. So, you know, I always pay attention to what that marine forecast is. And a lot of times I like to double that number when it says waves one to two. Then I'm always counting them two to four. <laughs> All right. Now uh, that takes care of our weather. Let's go ahead and take our first break. Got a special guest here, and you'll be really enjoying him. All right. Welcome back. Sit here. Oh, listen, we're going to do, I forgot to do something, okay, Give Bob? Give the tides. We've got to know the tides. Let's do the tides, okay? <laughs> our tides brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home. And looking at our tides this morning, we're looking at a low tide uh, at this morning at 12.44 a.m. We've already had a low tide, then a high tide at 1.55. Good, strong tide. A high tide right here in the middle of the day. And it's going to start dropping out again in the afternoon. Brought to us by Greg Brudnick and the staff over there at Kent Forest Lawn. Okay, Bob Stapleton. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be back. Divers Inn, one of our great sponsors here. We just, we just have great sponsors all over, you know, and uh, what's going on in the diving world? We're diving now. The water's cleared up some. It's warming it's up warming a little up. bit. Now it's 70 degrees is pushing it, maybe in the top six inches, but uh, it is warming up. It's getting nice. And well, how cold is it now as you go down? I, I, it's been 10 days since I've been wet, which is pretty unusual for me, and yeah. it was 68 at the top and 65, 64, 65 at the okay. bottom. But you can tell the difference when you're diving because you see all the plankton in the water. I mean, there's a lot of plankton now. Right. And that's that's when things begin to pop. All the bait fish come in and yep. the ling are moving. And yep. there's been some ling spotted on the local wrecks by some of the divers. Uh, well, speaking of diving now, this uh, Friday night, you have a uh, yeah, night, night dive. Yeah, night dive this Friday night. It's a scary sounding thing, night diving. I remember before I was a diver, I thought, man, <laughs> getting in that black water in the dark with nothing but a flashlight. But actually, it's very peaceful. I mean, it it's is. very, un it's different. Uh, you'd think, well, all you can see what's in your flashlight beam, and that's pretty much true. But uh, well, I'm just under the impression, uh, being a novice, that that's when the big sharks come out of nah, night. it's not an issue. I, I swim around a lot of times, just hover over the wreck with my light out, watching the lights moving around down below, and it's like floating in space. It's it's kind of fun. Yeah, oh, okay. it's, it's a lot of fun. Then different creatures come out at the night. The invertebrates come out more at night, and yeah. the lobsters will be out walking around, or snails that are buried in the sand all day will come out and feed at night and are crawling around. I mean, there's a lot to see. You usually have divers go down. Uh, as many as you have on the boat. I mean, no boat, you know. No boat full? Boat full. Could, okay. could be. I mean, 12, 13 uh, divers in the water, but it's that just makes it prettier. You know, it's yeah. it's fun to dive at night. It's How deep we all be? Oh, normal, 70 feet or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, what else is going on diving? Well, if you're diving at night or in the daytime, I brought this camera in. I don't know if I've showed this before. Do we have a... No, we haven't showed this before. Okay. Can we get a close-up on this? This is... Yeah, uh, let's see. Well, I'll just yeah, hold, hold it my it hand. There. This is uh, <laughs> the camera I use for these videos. It's a contour, and uh, it's small, compact. This, it's just as it sits now, 
it's good to three feet, uh, so one meter depth. Okay. So it's okay to take it in the swimming pool. I've done that. I mean, normally you wouldn't test those kind of things. I don't guess, but I do. I mean, heck, Clay will have to just give me another one if it messes up. <laughs> but it's, it's pretty simple to use. It's uh, got a micro SD card inside uh -huh. that's uh, 16 gigabyte is what I put in there, but you don't need that much. And a USB hookup. Okay. Latch it shut. One button on the top to turn it on. Just slide that forward, and it's... Uh, Hmm. You can see the green lights come on, tell you that the batteries are good and it's recording. Okay. Turn it off, you're done. Now it does have this laser pointer. If you can, if you can okay. see that. I'm, okay. So you got to hold it down. Let's see if we can put it on the table. Put it on my hand. On your hand. Anyway, okay, there it that, is. the right point there. is, if you mount this so it's uh, okay. sideways or something like uh, you see the the. Uh, Game wardens on the wardens use it, and they'll have it on their epaulet or something. You can twist the lens to make everything level. That okay. Way. Really handy little camera, and if you put it in this waterproof case, oh yeah, that's all there is to it. Drop it in there, and it's good to 130 feet, just that easy. A waterproof case. Yep, and a little slide button on the top. It's got. Uh, that's it. Just click it on, Ooh. click it off. You might wonder how do you know what you're taking a picture of, and that's. Well, you really don't until you get back and look at it, but it's well, wide angle. It's very wide angle, and generally wherever you point it in the general direction is what you're going to get for a picture. Well, I like cool. it. It's not very expensive. I hate to quote prices because it might be wrong, but I think for $250 you can get the camera case, everything. Uh, then you got it. Ready to yeah, use, that's ready cool. To go. Yeah, it's, that's cool. it's handy to use. There's some yeah. great pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got a night dive. Okay, what else you got? Uh, well, I wanted to talk a little bit about. Do, is it, do we have time to well, talk well, about? Well, I tell you what, we got some good video, don't we? We got video, and we got. Uh, I want to talk about etiquette. Okay, let's water. save that. Let's go and do the video first, and then we'll come back at the end and do the etiquette. Okay. 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 All right, let's take our break, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, folks. Here with Bob Stapleton from Divers Den, and I had a guy tell me one time. Uh, Rick Johnson said. When you, when you show video, just show anything because a lot of people are at home don't see a lot of different things. And he said, show it underneath a bridge. And, you know, people, how many people seen underneath the bridge? Right, I well, know. Yeah. How many of us have we really seen underwater here in this in the Panhandle? And, yeah, and you, I think I got some things here that'll be pretty interesting. Okay, I always enjoy, always enjoy the, the video. The fishermen are often curious about what's down there. We had we were diving on the uh, hovercraft the other day that's mm -hmm. out there close in, and uh, another boat, a fishing boat, pulled up and said. These are school buses, aren't they? And well, on the bottom machine, it looks like two school buses, maybe. Uh -huh. I said, no, you just don't know what's down there. We'd be glad to show you, though, sometime. So here's a little video of uh, just some diving locally. I think the first thing I want to show is uh, our dive club went out last uh, summer. I mean, some of this is, there's me blowing bubbles again. That isn't where I wanted to be. Here we go, on top of one of the bridge spans, that's an animal, as plant-like as it looks. It's a hydroid out there, plenty of bait. The bait is beginning to move back in on okay. uh, some of the inshore wrecks. I've seen a lot of cigar minnows. Uh, nice size for this time of year. I mean, they're uh, four inches long or so. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they start out at an inch or so. I'm sure they're all sizes out there, but that's why the, why the fish are moving in. One thing I want to point out here as we go through these videos and watch them is so often the fishermen think, oh my gosh, I can't dive fish where the divers are. Well, if you watch, what are these fish doing when they see a diver? They aren't running off and hiding. They're hardly affected. Well, it, might, it might help the fishermen a little bit because the grouper will move off the wreck out onto the sand and wait for us to leave, which is exactly where you want them if you're fishing. You don't want them on the wreck. You want them out on the sand. There's DJ. Uh -huh. She just shot a barracuda, stoned it. And she got the perfect hit on that one. Wow, that was a good shot. Yeah, now look at this. She's just hanging there, not holding on to anything, just floating in the water. Because later you'll see novice divers. An experienced diver, you'll see that it's just like totally effortless. I mean, you, you're totally aware of your buoyancy, and that's, what you, that's the kind of control you need to have when you start spearfishing. That's why novice divers have so much trouble with spearfishing, because they're floating up and down. Now, th these divers are experienced divers, all of them. I mean... They're some of them almost as old as me. No way. So they've so they've been doing it a while. <laughs> so anyway, that was just a, a dive club trip. There's my wife. All right. Saying hello to you. Now what's that structure? That's this is one of the bridge spans. Okay. There are 17 of them out there. Great fishing places, if you get off of them. Up current is the secret. Get up current because that's where the bait is, 
and off of the wreck, 40, 50, 100 feet off the wreck is okay. good. Because you fish on it, I'll just pick up your lids and <laughs> get your anchors for you and everything else. But uh, if you fish off of it a little bit, that's where the fish are. You'll be better. If you're fishing straight on top of the wreck, not a good plan. Right. Let's see. This was interesting. This doesn't often happen. It is not good video, but you can see there, that's a dolphin. And they don't usually come around so much when uh, you're making bubbles. If you get in the water with no making no bubbles, they might come around. But this is a bottlenose dolphin. Okay. And it was just kind of curious, hanging around, watching to see what I was doing. And I was watching it. And uh, in a minute here, I was just wondering how it would react if I shot a fish. So there were some barracudas hanging around there. You can see I'm pretty close. Now I'm holding that contour roam in one hand and my gun in the other hand, and I shot that barracuda. And he takes off. You see the bubbles streaming out of him. The reason it didn't kill him is that I hit him a little bit low and shot him through the swim bladder. And there's the dolphin in the background <laughs> just kind of watching. I didn't know what he was going to do. And yeah. it, he was just curious. He just watched to see what happened. Well, he didn't think it was a free meal, huh? No, no. Uh, I did have one come up to me one day when I shot a red snapper, and he was right in my face thinking I was going to feed him that snapper. But it's, they're so smart. I put him on my stringer, and when he saw that fish go on my stringer, he left. I mean, he said, okay, done. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't giving that to me. Right. Okay, here in a couple of seconds, we're going to switch to, um, I think this is the Chippewa. That's mm -hmm. uh, a the mast has fallen down out in the sand. This was last summer also, very clear. And that's just a Goliath grouper uh, swimming wow. along the bottom. But you'll get to see the wreck. I mean, everybody's fished at Chippewa. It's out in about 100 feet of water. Yeah. Great place for red snapper. Uh, but that's, that's a big Goliath grouper, but wow. they get bigger. Wow, that's beautiful. But you'll see how he can... I thought he was going to go up under there. They'll turn sideways and get in a hole so small you wouldn't think they'd go in it. But this is a cracked open wreck. You'll see it's pretty good size. Covered with all kinds of encrustations. You see the small bait there, the tiny little bait there. Uh, don't know who they're going to grow up to be. You can, you know, the reason it's festooned with fishing line is obviously you fish right on it you're going to get tangled. These are novice divers. You can see you'll see some hand flapping and you see they're vertical in the water because they're too heavy. <laughs> I mean they've got not enough air in their BC and they tend to sink and so they're having to fin all the time to keep from sinking uh, to the bottom okay. and they aren't aware of it. I mean it takes experience. I mean you, it just it's nothing bad about it. It's not going to hurt them. They're, they're okay but uh, Let's That's move on up here. That's a little too far. Okay. Here's here's something I wanted to show. This is on the Max Reef, which is um, a big work barge out there. If I can get right to it here, it's at about 8:40 on my timeline. Which is there's a plaque that was put out there a few years ago and yeah, memory of name, yeah, <laughs> memory of Chuck Gigley, um, the founder of Divers Den. Interesting to go down and visit the plaque, clean it off every now and then. There oh. you, can, you can see it. Well, that's how I guess Giggly Enterprise. Uh-huh, okay. yep. Founder of Divers Den, Giggly Enterprises, 1932 to 2006. Great guy, great guy. Really dedicated to that's helping neat. people and diving. That must have been one of his favorite spots. Yeah, yeah, we enjoy yeah, going yeah. there. It, it's a great dive spot. You uh -huh. can see here in a little bit on this video, uh, it's there are courses that you can take for uh, wreck diving, mm -hmm. and that involves penetrating the wreck, going in an overhead environment and looking around. I mean, there are special cautions you need to yeah. observe. Now, I don't go into wrecks where I can't see light out. I mean, I just, it's well, not I think a good, that's thing a good to do idea. That. <laughs> hey, here's some, this is kind of a, some silt is collected on the bottom of the wheelhouse there, on the floor of the wheelhouse, and there are anemones there. There, these are, see them in sheltered areas where the current's not bad, and I'll move this camera down. You can see the camera stays in focus as you move it in, how wide the angle is on it. I just push it on in until I start touching it, and it gets scared and retreats <laughs> into its tube. Anemone. Yep. Okay.
That's a good bottom there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is inside the wreck. You see the portholes yeah. there. I mean, you got some trucks here already. Uh huh. Uh huh. So you went all the way in there. Yeah, yeah. There's no problem in there. I mean, I can see daylight through the through the portholes there. And these wrecks that are intentionally sunk, they they're prepared before they're taken out there. They're stripped out. Of course, some engines yeah. are taken out of them. All the oil. I mean, it's very the inspection is very rigorous to be able to uh, legally sink one of those wrecks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, strip out all the wiring, even because they don't put plastics in the ocean. You can't legally sink a fiberglass hull in the out there. Now this is recreation. We're going out for some spear fishing this day. We're just uh, just a little bit of video. I don't need. I was talking talking to him about some stuff. There's somebody with spear points poking out of the top of their head there. Yeah, I know. That was a great day. You'll see later on in this video. We. Uh, very successful that day with our diving, with our spear fishing. A lot of young people. <laughs> yeah, a lot of young people. That girl there, I enjoyed talking to her because she was studying marine biology at some northern college, and cool. I taught marine biology for a few years, and uh, I was able to show her some things that perked her interest a good bit, things that you wouldn't see yeah. when you're studying marine biology in the Midwest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's get on here a little bit. Let's see. Right. Got about one more scene. Okay. Uh, well, that's about hydrating. Yep, that's always a good idea to stay well hydrated. Uh, if you've ever fished on the USS Tarpon, here's some video from that. It's just scattered wreckage now. But another thing I wanted to point out is you see, I'm swimming up on these amberjack. They're not running away, hiding from divers, trying to get away. I mean, they're just there. You know, I mean, if you were to fish right next to me. That's fine. I'll probably see your lure. You're probably not going to catch me. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't mind if fishermen come in and fish close by. I don't. I mean, there might be some captains that do, but it, it doesn't bother me particularly if people come in and fish close to us. Just watch out for my diver's bubbles. Don't run over anybody. But that's the uh, the boiler stacks on the uh, tarpon. Oh, there's, on a the tarpon. Pla there's a plaque there also. It's a state archaeological site. How much more time we got? Well, I got plenty more to here to look at. This one up. Uh, okay. What, what else you got? Let's see. I've got <coughs> the catch from our day's dive, and here we are unloading the catch. Right, here we go. Somebody Let's shot a look down. Now, that's that's <laughs> rude to shoot one of those, but it is an unusual fish. I told them they had to take it home and eat it. They're so flat, I don't know what you'd get out of it. It'd be like a piece of bacon when she got it done. Got a nice lobster. Bunch of black snapper, a limit of limit of amberjack, uh, sheep's head. I mean, it was we had a really nice day. We're docked down at Captain Anderson's now, right on the wharf. There. Oh, okay. <coughs> you look out the window when you're eating, and uh, I, there's some line fish that we got. A couple of big ones. Uh, you're down there eating and see what the divers can do compared to the. Well, mine, very fisherman. good. That's a good catch right there. Yeah. All right, let's wrap this up. Oh, nice one. Okay, we'll wrap it up. We'll take a break and be right back. All right, welcome back. Divers in here. Uh, Bob Stapleton always comes on. Oh, that's some really good video. Really, good. I'm glad really you enjoy enjoyed that. Yeah. That's amazing. Let's take a look at our fishing game forecast for today. Brought to us by Mark Cowart, Edgewater Beach Realty. Number 832-6000. Our time this, today will be this morning at 6.07 to 8.07. And uh, late this afternoon, 6.30 to 8.30. Two excellent times to get out and enjoy the great outdoors, okay? Also, while, while we have a break here, I want to go ahead and mention the uh, Fish and Wildlife Commission, their, their effort on recognizing these big catches of our, of our bass, okay? And I really appreciate what they're doing. I want all of y'all to register. You can win all kinds of prizes and all. Go to myfwc.com and, and register for Trophy Catch. And, and they do have three different categories. Of course, they, they start out here with the, uh, the, of course, the big one would be the Lunker one. And then uh, well, you, you can see that we have it there on uh, just the three right there. Okay. But anyway, go to myfwc.com and uh, reward yourself with a you catch and release. And, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. The Lunker Club is, you know, from 
eight to nine pounds, a trophy club from 10 to 12.9, and a Hall of Fame. That's the one we want to be in the Hall yeah, of Fame. Yeah, yeah, I want to be there. 13 pounds or greater. Ooh, yeah. And uh, you yeah. want all kind of stuff. And 22 we're talk pounds, I think, is the target, isn't it? Uh, yeah, then, that's then you right. Get rich. That's, that's <laughs> a world record. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, go ahead and check that out. We'll talk more about it tomorrow, too. Okay? Etiquette. We've got a couple well, minutes. Well, a little, could... little bit about Divers Down Flag. I was surprised. This has been several years ago. We, I was uh, snorkeling up scallops, so you know it was a while back because it was in on the backside of Shell Island and the bay was still open. Okay. So it was clo closed for scalloping in the bay now. Don't do that. Four yeah. ninety four, yeah. But uh, I was standing next to the boat with my mask on my head and with my daughter there talking to my wife, was shucking some oysters, and the Marine Patrol came plowing in, digging up grass to get to us in two feet of water, and issued me a citation for diving without a diver's down flag. And I thought, well, that can't be right. I'm not diving. All I got is my mask and snorkel. That's all it takes. Mask and snorkel, you're a diver. That's right. You have to display a dive flag. If you're displaying one on a float, it has to be 12 by 12 inches. If, you, if you're displaying one on your boat, it has to be at the highest point on your boat and larger flag. Mm -hmm. Any of them you should buy. It. If you buy one at the dive shop, it'll be right. Yeah. Uh, the alpha flag in some countries is international. It's, it's not that needs to be the red yeah. with the white stripe. But now you say you have your boat docked at uh, Captain Anderson. Yeah, it's at Captain Anderson's okay. now. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, we got flags flying there. You can't miss it. Easy loading. Mm -hmm. Nice place. Nice place to eat yeah. when you're done. It, well, uh, we probably don't have time to get into etiquette. But, yeah. Okay. But next time you come, we're going to talk a lot about it. But listen. Okay. Uh, one one of the things, uh, if people want to take lessons, I always want to cover that. I've got two friends that are coming down from Valorant. Bring them on. Husband and wife are coming down here to take lessons. You need to call the shop and talk to them about it. There's two ways you can do it. One is more classroom and less online, and there's another way you can do it. You can do almost all the academics online. The in-water training is the same for both programs. Okay. And if you ever have any questions from your either online study or in-classroom study, the instructor's not going to let you go until all your questions are answered. Okay. So that's the way it works. I think it's three hundred dollars for the normal just classroom and three fifty okay. if you do it all online and just come in and take your dive skills. All right. So oh, well, thank you as always. So you much. bet. Appreciate it. A lot it. of fun. Good stuff there. Bob Staples and Diver Den. Thank you folks for watching the show. If you do something good for somebody today, have a great day and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.